Okay, so we're going to be putting our little cabochon bead and our Kiops bead onto the lock shape here and we're going to be stitching those into position. What you can do to make that just a little bit easier and a little bit more secure later on is you can put a tiny dab of E6000 glue onto the back of each of those just to um, secure them while you are sewing. So I'm just putting the tiniest of little dabs on there and I'm going to pop that over the lock shape here on my piece and just give that a little press. Tiny little dab on the back of that. Your lock shape look like this. So just press that down. And then if you have the luxury of not being in a hurry, I would set that aside to dry for like five minutes, five to ten minutes. Time to have a cup of tea and let that dry and then we can come back and it will be much easier to sew. So we'll see you in just a jiffy. While we're waiting for these beads to dry, one other thing that you can glue in preparation is we can put a tiny bit of glue on our little D-ring and hold it down onto this. Um, the reason I want to do that is just to make it a little bit easier to tack down and sew later. It's not necessary if you don't like E6000, you don't have to do this part. Um, I just think it makes it easier if it's just gently tacked into place um, before I start sewing. So I'm just putting, you know, very small amount of glue onto this D-ring. And then I'm going to set that aside to dry as well. And that will be ready for us to use when we need to. Okay, so now I'm going to start sewing. I need to think about what needle I'm going to use. Um, I really like using these ones. They're a John James straw in a size 11. Uh, they come in a 25 pack. I got mine from Cranberry here in Australia, uh, $9 for a 25 pack. Um, and I just really like that they're not brittle. They tend to bend more than snap. Um, and I learned to do millinery with them um, when I was at TAFE here in Australia. So um they're fabulous. I find them fabulous for sewing. I also like that they're a little bit shorter than a regular beading needle um, and obviously their strength I really like. They also have an eye on them which I find easier to thread because it's more rounded rather than flat like a beading uh, needle and lots of people have a bit of trouble threading their needle. If you bring it right down, pinch it in your fingers so you can just see about a millimeter of it and I'm pinching that quite tight. When I bring my needle down over that thread, the thread has nowhere to go apart from in the hole. And you can see that that's threaded first time. Uh, it takes a little bit of practice to get used to threading your needle like that. Um, if you have been threading it with um, the thread out and about, and um, but I find it gives you much more control and more often than not, it will go through the eye of the needle um, rather than giving you grief. The other thing I like to do when I'm doing bead or embroidery with Fireline is I burn a little knot on the end of the thread. Now, I learned this technique from a YouTube video um, with Patrick Duggan from here in Australia. He's a uh, fabulous beater. And um, I love the blob knot trick for joining Fireline. And I love using a blob knot when I'm doing my bead embroidery. Now, I've got this lighter um, that's refillable, so I can refill it when I need to. Um, and I've turned it down to the lowest possible setting. So when I turn it on, you can see it's got a very, very small flame. And so I have quite a bit of control there where I burn that knot. You can see I've just melted a bit of that, and it's made a really strong knot on the end of my fire line. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up through the foundation right next to the hole that I'm about to go through and apologies if this is difficult to see because it's black beads and black thread but there is a hole in that needle I'm just going to pass through that and I'm going to head back down as close to that hole as possible and pull that up tight and then I'm going to head through the second hole that I've got there and I'm bringing the needle right up next to that second hole, threading through. 
and passing back down right next to that. So now I'm going to pass through those um, thread paths once more. Okay, so I've stitched through both the holes on that a couple of times and you can see here on the back where my thread path goes. It doesn't matter if it's a little bit messy, that's all okay. Now I'm going to stitch through the holes on the two-hole cabochon. Again, I'm coming up right next to where the hole is there next to the cabochon. You want the bead to not have any play in it, especially if there's no glue underneath your bead. Um, you don't want the bead to be able to move around so if you put the stitch in the exact right position for it then it's got nowhere to go it um, won't have any movement won't be able to move around and you can see I've got a tiny bit of gloopy glue there I'm just gonna pull that away with my finger still a little bit down gone through those holes once I'm just gonna go through them once more again Um, you may notice here that I'm stitching with a thimble and I have a little protection uh, covering my pinky and it's just the way that I hold my needle and I'm using my thimble always to push that needle through. Um, it's whatever you get used to. Um, I did some work experience um, here years ago uh, with the Melbourne Theatre Company and I had to wear a thimble for that and after I finished my work experience there I couldn't sew without the thimble um, I got so used to it so I just use it all the time and this little guy is called my fingerling so this um, I use this to stop the thread burn on my pinky when I'm pulling on my needle uh, pulling the thread through um, sometimes I get a bit of thread burn in in the little knuckle of my finger and I don't like it. So I've just used a piece of um, leather there. And I do have a YouTube video showing you how you can make your own one of those. Um, so I will link that down below um, in the description of this video if you would like to watch that and make your own fingling. All right. So I'm going to do a little knot on the back here now. And that's just so that if any of the next steps, uh, for whatever reason, I need to cut them or something uh, comes undone, then not everything's going to fall off if every few steps, if I tie a knot. All right, so now we are going to do uh, a four bead back stitch with some size 15 seed beads. And I'm going to be using these gold ones here. And we're going to do a little perimeter around our lock here. All right, so to do a four bead back stitch, I'm going to start by picking up the four beads. Now you'll see here I've exited almost right in the corner there, and I'm going to start traveling around that direction. So you can see that it started here, and I'm going to head around this way. Now, when you're a beginner to this, it's a really good idea to pull the beads up on the end of the thread. I've guided them down, and you can use your needle to sort of coax them up against that bead. And then you can work out exactly where your next stitch needs to go. So in this instance, my needle needs to go here to make sure those beads sit down nice and flat. And when I pull that down, you can see that they're sitting flat up against that cabochon. Now a four bead back stitch is you pick up your four beads and then I'm gonna head up through the middle of those four beads. Bring my needle up right in the middle there and I'm going to pass through the second two beads again. So I'm passing through two beads. So once you've pulled that through, pull it up nice and firm. You can see how I pulled away from the stone and then up again and that just gave that a nice tension with that thread. All right, so now I am going to pick up another four beads and 
lay them down next to the cabochon there. Work out roughly where they need to go. You can use my needle, just sort of coax them into position. And I'll pass that back down. Now you can see my little end here is patching. You might have heard that knot pull through. I'm just going to straighten out that file line, try and get that knot to come out. I'm back up through the middle of the four beads and pass through the last two beads again. It's quite out of focus. Hopefully that is better. All right, so I'm going to continue that same picking up four, coming up between the four and passing through two. And I'm going to do that all the way around. So you can see here I picked up four beads. There's actually only three beads that want to fit in that last gap. So I'm going to take off that fourth bead that I added. Just to pass through it and add it back to the pile. And just have three in that one. Still going to come up and pass back through the last two again. Now, when I'm doing the corner there, you'll notice I brought, even though I went through the last two again and then I went down, it's because I, I don't want this bead to pull out of position when I head in this direction. So I've come back down the foundation and bringing the bit in the needle back up next to that bead where I want it to be for this next one. And I'm just having a few digs at it there because I want to get it in the right position. So now I'm going to pick up four beads, guiding them down into position using my needle here. All right, so now I'm traveling around to that corner there, and I think if I just add the four, I think it should just pass around the corner nicely. You can always add them on and lay them around it and see how it looks. I think that's going to be fine once I stitch it. And you see it's just brought those beads around the corner there. Coming back up to... And go again. And you see how every so often, I, you know, you see me use my fingers there to push those beads into shape and then tension that thread to hold them a bit tighter. So I'm just going to add four beads and we're going to see how that looks. So I'm just picking up four beads and we're just going to see how that looks laying it around the corner here. Looks good. Coming up between the four beads and passing through that second two of them. Now I think I've got space for maybe one or two. I'm going to try and find two skinny beads off my bead mat so that I can fit two in. So I've just, you know, sometimes you have one that's slightly thicker than the other. So 
So I've just tried to make sure I've got two little ones and just pulled them in tight and I've only added two. I'm just going to go back through that last one again. And pull that into position. You can see again, I've used my fingers to tension that and then tension it with the thread below. You can see that is the first layer of the gold beads. Now to make this look like it is popping out a bit more, we're actually going to add a second row of the size 15s over the top of this one. And that's what makes this here stand up from the rest. You can see right down in there, if you look really close, you can see the row that's below. And that's because there is a row underneath them. So we're going to square stitch on these beads on the top. All right, so to square stitch these beads onto the top, I'm going to come up next to one of the beads that we first put on and pass through one bead. So I'm picking up one size 15 and I'm going out of that bead there at the start. I'm going to go into the other side of it and the next bead in the line. So I'm going through two beads in that base row, but I've only picked up one bead off the mat. And I'm just guiding that into position. When I pull that up tight, you'll see it's just sitting there on top of that initial one. So now I'm grabbing one more bead. And again, I'm coming out of this bead here. So I'm going to go into it and into the next one as well. The reason I do it like that is so that I don't have to pass through a bead and then come through to the next one. Sort of speeds it up a bit. Now these are going to want to fan out and sit a bit funny probably. Don't be surprised if they sit all loosey-goosey and wonky for a bit. Um, we are going to cinch them in by passing through them all again. So don't let it worry you if they are misbehaving. Again, I've picked up a bead and I'm passing through the one I'm coming out and the next one again. And I'm just, I'm using my other finger. This one here is tensioning the thread, this hand. I'm using that to create some tension. This one here is saying, bead, you must sit there nicely. And I use that finger quite a bit to guide those beads into position. Again, I'm coming out of that one. So I'm going to go back into it, but from the other side of it. And I'm going to pass through those two in one go. Okay, so I'm going to continue to square stitch my way around, adding one bead on top of every bead that we've already got here. When I get to these corners, I might come back and just show you the way I'm holding my beadwork so you can see what I'm doing.
Okay, so I've done my little square stitches all around these beads around the top here. So now what I'm going to do is step up into this first bead added, second bead added, based on where I've come out of, second bead added. Now step up into that one. And now I'm going to pass through these outer row of beads, the top row, I should say, outer, top, whichever. And you can see as I pull those in, they sit nice and upright and snug next to that cabochon. So I just keep going through the beads, going through four or so at a time, pulling them up, pull them up. Like so. And then I'm going to pass through the first couple added again as well. And that's just going to bring them nice and snug into the edge. So I'm sort of massaging those beads into position. And this one here is sitting a bit funky. So I'm actually going to just head through the next couple again. Just to really... I'm really telling those beads, no, you're going to hug that cabochon. Okay, so you can see them all sitting there nicely now. Now I can come back down through the foundation at the bottom. And they're snugging in there nice. So I can come and add my same square stitch beads to the bottom of the lock. So I'll bring my needle up near that first bead come through the first bead. Now this is where it starts to get a bit tricky and you'll see, like, see how I'm bending that foundation. I'm not too worried that the foundation's bending. Picking up a bead, heading through the first bead and the second bead again there. There we go. And I'm going to keep doing the same thing there all the way around. And of course, again, like as before, they're going to sit all splayed out and funky for a little bit until we come back and go through them in that second row. And that second row is what's going to hold all of those little beads into position. So you can see I've done all my little square stitch beads. And when I went through this one here, I went through the bottom one on that side as well. So my needle now, when I step up, I want to be stepping up into this second bead here. Step up into that one. And I'm just passing through all of those square stitched beads that we just added and pulling them up tight up against our little keyhole. I keep saying it's a lock. It's a keyhole.
and pulling it up. You can see now all those beads are behaving and they are sitting nicely around those two beads. So what I'll do now is bring it, bring my thread through that first bead added. Make sure that thread is not going to come across the top of the key ops. And what I'll actually do is going to bring my thread down. I'm going to come up between those two beads and I'm going to just do a little couch stitch, which is just a stitch over the top of those two threads and just pull them down into position. It just means that any threads that were passing here between the center of the keyhole, they won't get seen. Um, so they've disappeared down into the lock. So that is the forming of the keyhole.